Hi, Black Cat Recapped here. Today I am going to explain a drama movie named Where the Crawdads Sing. On October 30, 1969, in a place in North Carolina, two boys were riding their bikes in the woods. They found a young man named Chase Andrews in a marsh. They called the police, and Sheriff Jackson and Deputy Purdue came. They saw that Chase had fallen from a tall tower, maybe because he fell through a broken door or someone pushed him. The people in the town heard about Chase's death and thought that a young woman named Catherine Danielle Clark, also known as Kia, might be responsible. Kia found out that people were looking for her, so she tried to escape. However, she was caught by Jackson and other officers near the swamp. Kia was taken into custody, and a lawyer named Tom Milton talked to her. He said he needed to understand who she was to help her. Kia was initially quiet but eventually started telling her story before Tom left. In 1953, when Kia was a child, she lived with her ma, older siblings Murph, Mandy, Missy, and Jody, and their abusive pa they couldn't stand him anymore, so they left one by one. Ma left first, and Kia tried to follow her. Later, Murph, Mandy, and Missy also left and Jody told Kia to go to a place where the crawdads sing if she needed to escape. However, Kia wanted to stay, hoping Ma would come back. Kia's father, at times, isn't mean to her, and they go fishing together. He gives her a bag, and she starts collecting seashells and feathers. There's a boy named Tate Walker near the marsh who is nice to Kia and becomes her friend. When Kia goes into town, the only people who are kind to her and don't judge her because she's dirty and untidy are a shopkeeper named Jimmy Madison and his wife Mabel. Mabel gives Kia new clothes and encourages her to go to school. Kia tries to go to school, but the other kids are mean to her because of her appearance. So she runs away and never goes back. When she gets home, she finds a letter from her ma in the mail, but her pa takes it, reads it, and burns it so Kia can't see what it says. Her pa starts drinking again and leaves her all alone in the house. In the present, the lawyer for the Andrews family is trying to make Kia look bad, but most people already think she's guilty because of rumors and public opinion. Tom, the lawyer, is doing his best to keep Kia calm and show that there's no real evidence to prove she's responsible for Chase's death. In 1962, as Kia grows up, she starts drawing shells and things she finds in the marsh. She meets an older boy named Tate, who helps her learn to read and write so she can write down her discoveries. He suggests that she send her drawings and writings to publishers. They become close, and Tate shares his own family story with her. Kia and Tate fall in love, and they almost become intimate by the river, but Tate changes his mind because he's afraid it might harm Kia's life. Tate gets accepted into college which means he will be away from Kia for a while. She's sad about it but lets him spend one more night with her. Over time, Kia starts feeling angry at Tate for leaving her. In 1968, Kia meets a guy named Chase when he's with his friends by the water. He's friendly to her, and they start a relationship. Chase takes Kia's virginity, but it's not a good experience for her. He takes her to the same tower where he's later found dead. Kia gives him a seashell necklace, which becomes important in the court case because the necklace wasn't on Chase's body when he died. At the same time, Kia has to deal with people who want to take her house away, unless she can prove that she owns it. Kia sends her drawings to publishers, and they make a real book out of them, all about seashells and feathers. This book brings in some money, and she uses it to keep and fix up her house. One day, Jody comes to visit her. He had joined the army and found Kia after seeing her book. He tells Kia that he lost touch with their other siblings and wouldn't even recognize them if he saw them. Jody also shares that their mom had tried to bring the family back together, but their pa threatened to hurt them all if she came back. Sadly, their mom ended up passing away from leukemia. After some time, Tate comes back from college and hears Chase saying mean things about Kia. They almost start a fight, but Jimmy steps in to stop them. Tate tries to visit Kia at her home, 
but she gets angry and throws rocks at him until he apologizes and explains why he was gone for so long. She forgives him. While Kia is in town, she sees Chase and wants to invite him to her place. But she finds out that he's with another woman and plans to marry her. Chase confronts Kia at her home after a bad encounter in a store, and he tries to hurt her. When Kia fights back and hits him with a rock, as she runs away, she threatens to kill him if he comes near her again. Someone hears her say this and later tells it in court. When Kia gets back home, she sees that Chase had already been there and made a mess of the place. Around the time when Chase died, Kia was invited to have dinner with publishers. This comes up in court, where Tom argues that while Kia stayed in a hotel close to the bus station, making it possible for her to sneak out, lure Chase to the tower, and harm him. It doesn't make much sense for her to do that. Before the jury makes their decision, Tom and the lawyer for the Andrews family make their final statements. The only people there to support Kia are Tate, Jody, and the Madisons. In her cell, just before the verdict is reached, Kia tells Tom that even though the people in town were unkind to her, she never had any bad feelings toward them. She also remembers Tom from her childhood and how he was one of the few people who were kind to her. A decision is made, and the jury says that Kia is not responsible for Chase's death because there isn't enough proof. Mrs. Andrews is upset, but Kia's supporters are happy for her. The judge says he's sorry for the accusations against Kia. Kia and Tate continue their relationship, and they consider themselves married. They have a family, Kia writes more books, and they go to Jimmy's funeral together. Kia and Tate grow old together. In her final moments, Kia goes on her boat into the marsh, and it seems like she sees her mom's spirit, as if her mom is welcoming her in death. Tate later finds Kia dead in the boat. He goes through her things and discovers a book with a poem where Kia writes that sometimes for the prey to survive, the predator must die. There's also a drawing of Chase and the seashell necklace with his blood on it, showing that Kia really did kill him. Tate throws the seashell into the marsh to keep Kia's reputation untarnished. <laughs>